In this video, I'm going to be unboxing and spray testing the Gallery, at least that's how I think it's pronounced, GHAC98D airbrush. Let's get into it right now. So as well as the 98D, Gallery also sent me another 98D. They may have done that by accident because they're both the same and in the Ace series. I'll chat with them about potentially getting some of these others. From what I've heard, the Supreme, which will be more like your Micron equivalent, is still in production. On top of the two 98Ds, they also sent me the GHAD 68. This is a trigger style brush. Not going to look at this one today, but I will showcase this one in a later video. You can see that this one is from the advanced range. So at time of recording this video, this particular brush is $119.99 USD. And I'll pop a link to this airbrush in the description below so you can check it out. Let's cut the seal. Now I can pull it out of its sleeve. Lift off the lid. This is a great idea, just a breakdown of all the parts. Just a handy exploded diagram to have to know where everything goes. Just the spray test. So just like the Awada, tested at the factory before it was shipped out. Quick start guide. Get some replacement seals, which is handy. And the seals in this brush are Teflon, so you can use automotive paints in it. Some super lube, something I don't use. Up to you if you wish to use it. If you are gonna use it, I used to just do a drop on the needle and a drop behind my trigger. So because this one comes with a 0.38 mil fitted, this I assume would be the 0.5, because it also comes with a 0.5 setup, nicely packaged. And it's got the head assembly, plus you can see the nozzle in there as well. And you also get the needle, which corresponds to that nozzle. And you can see the tip of the needle there. Another thing I've heard about the needles with this brush is that they're bendy. And you can see, you can definitely bend them a lot easier than other needles. And it's still perfectly straight. It's nice to know that it would give it a little bit more durability, which is good. I wouldn't recommend doing this with your own one, but at least if you do happen to bump it or drop it, it's got more of a chance of surviving. Obviously, the tip of the needle is the most important part, but having some flexibility would definitely strengthen it. And nice that they give you this storage tube as well for your needle. You can use that for other needles as well. These are always very handy. The airbrush itself... Nice weight to it. Feels a bit heavier than my Iwata Eclipse. I'm a big fan of these rubber caps. Always good to just pop them back on when you finish. So it's good that it comes with that. It's the colour cup. Screw that on. Now this is a quarter ounce colour cup, so just over 7mm. Another cool feature is that the colour cup on the inside is heavily polished, which should make it a bit easier to clean. You can really see the difference between the gallery brush versus my Eclipse Takumi. The other interesting feature on this particular brush is that it has a unique nozzle design. If I carefully remove the needle, take off this head assembly. One thing I do like straight away is that the nozzle doesn't actually screw in. It just pushes into that base there. So once you screw this head assembly on, that aligns the nozzle. So that's a nice feature. That'll avoid you ever having to worry about stripping the thread on your nozzle or snapping it off. Trust me, I've done that many times. So taking a closer look at that nozzle, you can see as I spin it around, there's eight channels. So this is where air will pass through and you're gonna get a different flow of air coming off your fluid nozzle and propelling the paint onto the surface. I'll be interested to see how this affects the performance. Definitely looks pretty cool. And it's a bit more obvious when I hold the nozzle up to the camera like this, almost looks like a gear. So definitely a cool feature and we'll see how that performs. Screwing this back on. I'm gonna leave the air cap off. I prefer spraying without one. Just be careful not to drop your needle. Pushing the needle back in and make sure you tighten the locking nut so that you see your needle go back and forth. Otherwise you'll put it all together and no paint will come out. So it feels like a quality airbrush. The trigger action is nice and smooth. It's a bit of a higher trigger, which I don't mind. It's a little bit close to the cup because I usually have my finger over like so, but I'll get used to it. I'll try it out. You've got your cutaway handle. So easy to dislodge any tip drying, dried paint blockages. Just press your trigger down and pull back and that's gonna give you a full throttle blast and dislodge any particles that you don't want in your fluid nozzle. Also got the adjustment on the back here. So that will stop your trigger from going all the way back. Just wind it in a bit more so you can set it up for how much paint you want to come out. I don't use this at all, but when you're starting out, it's a good thing to do. It also comes with the male quick connect, which is nice. So I'm just gonna hook that up to my existing connector. 
and it does work which is great so ready to put some paint in and give it a go and the other thing to note is that they've got this scale here and you can see this airbrush is within a bit of the extreme detail fine to medium and then it also goes into the wide I'd assume that from here down would be your 0.38 and then from here up would be your 0.5 mil needle nozzle setup. And as you can see, for this demonstration, I've set my compressor at around 40 PSI, and I'm gonna be using some paint that I've pre-mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio. So equal parts paint with reducer or thinner, depending on what your paint manufacturer recommends. Now pressing down for air and pulling back for paint from about 20 centimeters away, I'm just gonna spray some broad spray just to get the feel for it, how it atomizes, and so far, really, really nicely, super smooth, doing some lines a little bit closer. And it does flow very well. I can see a little bit of intermittent spray. This can happen when airbrushes are straight out of the box. So I like to wear them in a little bit, but it definitely feels nice and smooth. So up closer now, almost touching the surface, pulling back on the paint. You can see there was nothing coming out. Got a little bit of tip drying, but not a lot there. So I'll clean that off and I'll try again. Okay, so attempt number two, up close, pulling back and now instant performance, which is great. Slow the line down a little bit. You can see I'm getting it nice and fine. This is a 0.38, so it's doing fairly well. Again, this is at a one-to-one -one ratio, so I could definitely over-thin my paint and potentially get even finer detail out of it. Try some fine dots. The action is very good. So as soon as I pull back on that trigger, I'm getting action, which is great. Definitely could do fine detail, no issue. Starting to tip dry again. Keep in mind, this is still that one-to-one -one ratio. So for a one to one ratio, I think that performs really well at the 40 PSI. I'm gonna add a bit more reducer into my paint now, drop down the PSI and see if I can go even finer than that. As the channels that I showed you in the fluid nozzle earlier are meant to handle a lower PSI so that you can do some really detailed stuff. So let's give it a go. So now at just over 20 PSI and I've thinned out my paint a little bit more, I'll see how it performs with some finer detail and see if those channels in the nozzle make any difference at all. So starting off with a bit of a broad spray first, first at this thinner ratio and lower PSI. You'll notice that the paint's definitely thinner. If I pull back really heavy you can see how wet that is, how easily it will go wet. So you need a lot more control when running it thinner paint. Now giving it a go with some finer stuff. I think you can agree it definitely can go finer when it's thinner. I don't feel any difference with something like this to an awada in regards to the channels within the nozzle, but I suppose that's a good thing. This paint is very thin now and it's still flowing nicely, so. I would say that if the channels weren't there, potentially I couldn't go as thin with my paint. 
but definitely no issue there with trying to get fine detail. And it feels still very solid and responsive. I do have to say I like the polished cup. You can see how clean that is and that was very easily done just using water to flush through that blue. So I'm just going to quickly swap over the brush to the 0.5 setup so you can see how that one performs. Now that I've got the 0.5 in there I'm going to go back to my 1 to 1 ratio and I've turned my PSI back up to 40 PSI. Bit of a broad spray. See I'm able to pump it on a lot easier now, it goes on a lot quicker and faster. Easily do thicker lines, but even with a 0.5, you'll notice how fine I can go. Tip drying a little bit now. That performs amazing. So you can see that 0.5, no problem at all. You can use that for your broad spray and still get your fine detail. The other thing I thought of, because this cup is removable, I'm gonna take it off and just use this airbrush as if it was just the inkwell only. I'm just going to use the Createx paint this time because it's easier to drop it in. Put a couple of drops of that magenta in there and see how it sprays. You can see that there's no problem at all running it without the pot on the top. And this is handy if you want to just do some real fine detail and you want that direct line of sight, you don't have the cup in the way. So a nice little feature, not sure if it was intentional for that reason, but I could definitely see myself using this brush set up like this. Just make sure that you don't tip it because then you'll drop your paint on the artwork. This paint's a bit thicker too, so that's why I'm getting a lot more tip drying. It's not thinned at all, but at least I know that works. So as you can see, for under 120 US dollars, this brush performs pretty well. That said, this is just my first test straight out of the box. I'm gonna be using this brush more over a period of time, and if I like it, you'll definitely notice it in more videos. What will it be like after a few weeks, months, or even years of airbrushing? I'm sure I'll find out, and if I'm still using it then, well then you know it's a really good airbrush.